So we've built a website using the startup framework. We started with the CSS version, and then we transferred it over to the less version. So now that we're in the less version, we want to start doing some customization. So here in the editor, I'm using a copy of the startup framework that was created by the generator. It's still the same project that we previously created, but the folder structure is just a little different. All of my startup files are right in here, and then all my customization files will go in here. And previously, we started with header 2, and right here I have header 9. But below header 9, I still have header 2. And that's because I want to mix and match these blocks together. Let's take a better look in the browser. So this is our page, and this is header 9, and below this is header 2. What I like about header 2 is the navigation. I like the logo and the title right over here to the left, and I like the navigation links here to the right. But with header 9, I don't want to use this type of navigation, but I do like the steps down here, and I like the concept of having this really big background image. So let's go back to the project, and let's mix these blocks together. We can see we have header 9 right up here, as well as header 2 right here. And we want to mix and match these blocks. So let's actually take the section from header 9, and let's copy that, and let's actually replace it with the section from header 2. And then up here, let's get rid of the header for header 9, because I just want the section part of header 9. So now I have the header for header 2, and I also have the section for header 9. So we've mixed these like blocks together. So now let's save this and see how it looks in the browser. So we can see now that our heading is the hybrid of header 2 heading and the section from header 9. So now that we've mixed the like block, let's start customizing the markup to have the content for our design. So the application we're going to be making is called Baseball App, and it's just a landing page for an application that's about baseball. So I'm going to first start up by changing our title. Instead of Go Startup, it's called Baseball App. So now that we've changed the title, let's change the links. So right here, instead of Home, we'll say Baseball App again. And we'll say Cards, Schedule. We'll have one for Team. And then we'll add another one for People. And we can keep the subnav links the same. And one thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to bring in my own image assets. So I'm just going to drop in an image folder that contains all the image assets I want for this design. So now I've dropped in these images right here. So I'm going to want to change the image for the brand. So instead of calling the infinity loop, we'll say images, and we'll place the infinity loop with logo.png. And we'll set the width to 173 and the height to 28. And we'll check this out in the browser to make sure our image asset is showing up properly. So now we can see that we have our baseball app logo showing up right, as well as our links. So now let's check out the responsiveness of this page, and we'll use a really cool tool using the Chrome Dev Tools. So I'm going to open up the JavaScript console, and even though this is already resizing the page for us, this isn't exactly what we want. You may see this little bar down here for console search, emulation, and rendering, but if you don't, you can click up here to the top right, and this will hide the drawer or show the drawer. And so then we'll click on emulation, and you can see there's a little selection here for a device, and this is Google Nexus 4, but we're going to check this out on an Apple iPhone 5. And as you can see, there's many devices that you can emulate this on. But for now, we'll just select iPhone 5, we'll hit emulate. And you can see right now it doesn't really look like it's running on an iPhone 5. And the little trick is you just kind of have to reload the page. Okay, so now the page is reloaded. And this is emulating the way it would look on an iPhone. So we can click here and we can see that we have our navigation. And then we can scroll down. And we can see for the most part this is pretty responsive. So if you're developing with a device in mind, or even a couple devices, this is an extremely powerful tool. And we'll be using it throughout this tutorial series to help give an accurate portrayal of what this is going to look like on a phone. And if you want to reset it, you just go right here, and you click Reset, and then you're already back to the way it would look in the browser. The first thing I'm going to want to do is within the container, I'm just going to want to get rid of this row. I don't really want to show that startup with the square. I have a big background image that I really want to showcase. So below the container, we'll first see the nav steps div. And within here where it says home page, we'll change that to great people. And then down here, instead of upcoming events, we'll change that to baseball cards. 
And down in Content 3, we'll change these H3 headers. And now we'll switch this. Instead of saying Made in New York, we'll call this the World of Baseball. And we're not buying the Gram app, we're buying the Baseball app. And ours is doesn't cost $9, we'll change it to $4.99. And we'll come down, we'll change some of the links on the footer. And now that we've changed the text and some of the markup, let's check it out in the browser. So as we can see, we don't have the square that highlights the startup framework anymore. And our changes down here have been applied as well. We'll scroll down and we can see that our text has changed here. We see World of Baseball and we have our baseball app and we also have our changed links on our footer. Let's uh, emulate this on an iPhone 5. We'll refresh the page and we can see that we have our push out menu. And as we scroll down, it has a couple quirks, but for the most part, it's pretty responsive. So I'll go back and reset this. So I mentioned that I have my own custom image assets and I really want to showcase it rather than this stock background image. So in the next tutorial, we're going to focus on customizing this content page to add in our own custom assets. So just like always, my name is David East. If you have any questions or want something explained in more detail, you can leave a comment or you can hit me up on Twitter.